Hello, egg. <laughs> egg. I'm getting top surgery. Yay. Woo. Before I start this video, I have to say thank you to everybody that has donated to my GoFundMe, everybody that's bought merch, because all that money is literally going towards this top surgery, and I genuinely would not be able to afford to have top surgery without you guys, because I spent a lot of my money on having my eggs frozen, which is another part of my transition, and it's a bit mad that I'm 19 and I've spent the majority of my money on medical care, but... Whatever, but genuinely I I actually like really do appreciate everything you guys have done for me. Um, I It's mad how much support you've given me for this shit, and I'm so fucking excited and like yeah Just thank you. So yeah, I'm having top surgery fucking finally But those of you who don't know <laughs> top surgery is what trans guys or people assigned male at birth No, fuck. It's what either trans guys or people assigned female at birth that don't identify with being female Um, it's a t surgery of the top Pretty much, in, in straight, you just, you, you get your tits chopped off. I know it sounds fucking stupid, but it's because of gender dysphoria, and it's the only way that people like me can actually, like, alleviate that dysphoria, so it's not that I just decided, oh, like, I, let's, let's get these things fucked off. It's a surgery that me and a bunch of people actually fucking need. I would genuinely want to die if I wasn't able to have this surgery, so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, just gonna give you guys a quick run-through of what's going on. Um... I went up to London yesterday to see Mr. Miles Berry, who's my top surgeon. Um, I had my top surgery consult. I emailed his team on the 16th of October, I think, to book an appointment to see him. His waiting lists are really short because he's a private surgeon. I could have had an appointment with him, um, like, a week ago, but unfortunately I couldn't because I was in Ireland and I could have had one the week before then, I think. I, I could have had one, like, very soon to when I emailed them, but my mum couldn't get a day off and I wanted my mum with me at the consult because she wants to know what's going on, so. So yeah, I booked my consult and then I went up to London yesterday. The consult cost like 100 quid, which is pretty decent considering a lot of other private surgeons would probably uh, charge more. So when I got to the Welbeck Hospital, I think it's called, where he works in the Welbeck Hospital, when I got there I had to sign some forms, had to get like my name, my address, my GP's name and address, um, if I have any allergies, if I've got any health problems, that was pretty easy. So after I did that, I went and met Miles Berry, gave him a, gave him a handshake. Uh, he was lovely, by the way. I really like him. He was, like, really easy to talk to. You can tell he's fucking good at his job. He's very concise. He's very he's very professional. So pretty much he went through why I wanted top surgery. Um, the first question he asked is, what do you want? And I'm like, well, top surgery, obviously. And he was like, that's good then. It's good you're here. He also asked a question which you guys probably wouldn't know about unless you've researched much about Miles Berry, um, he asks you what regret is. And I was like, well, regret is when you look back on something you've done and you think, oh shit, I shouldn't have done that. Which, I think he liked my answer. Uh, he also spoke to you about the two types of top surgery which he offers. He offers double incision, which is the one where you get like two incisions under your pecs. You get that surgery if you have like an average size chest up to like a large chest. The other surgery he offers is periareola, which is pretty much, there's like an incision around your nipple and he, he takes shit out through there and then takes a bit more skin around and sews it all up nicely. He also talked about the risks, so like you could get an infection, you could get deep vein thrombosis, um, you could technically lose your nipples, but he also reassured me that this is very uncommon. I think he's had like one person, two people lose their nipples, and he's like performed the surgery on like hundreds of people. He was very reassuring. I felt very good and safe. So after that, he had to take a look at my chest to see what he could like actually do for me. Obviously he has to see your chest before he before he operates, he asked if I wanted my mum to be there. Obviously, uh, no, I didn't. She even, she was like, no, I don't want to be there. He also offered me, like, a chaperone, I think he said. Um, it was just, like, to have another person in the room to make sure he's doing his job and not being a weirdo with me shirtless. I was like, you know, it would probably be even more awkward if there were two people looking at my bare chest than one, so I think I'm good with just you there. And he was like, fair play. So he was just like, okay, go around the corner of the room, there's a bed there, strip off and sit on the end of the bed, which I did, and it was awkward. It was fine though. Like, he didn't make it awkward at all, it was only awkward because, like, I've dysphoria, a lot of dysphoria around my chest, so I was like, okay, this is, I hate this. The only two people that have seen my chest bare is, um, Miles Berry. And Mary at the gender clinic, um, she had to check my chest before I started tea just to make sure everything was okay. So there's two people that have seen that. Um, <laughs> but it was fine. Pretty much he just like did some measurements. He like 
checked how like wide my nipples were, how 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 far apart they were from like my chest, and how how far apart they were from each other, and lots of different measurements. He was very quick. He wrote it down on his little tablet. He checked for like symmetry. Apparently, it's quite symmetrical, which is good, I guess. Also, I think I've told you guys this, but I've got like one inverted nipple, which is quite funny. It looks like a little looks like that. It's just quite gross. It's quite ugh. But yeah, he told me about that. He was like, okay, you got an inverted nipple. And I'm like, yeah, I do. I think I've looked a few times. So he wrote that down. I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. I probably should have asked him if he can fix it. But nipple bruck. If nipples bruck, that's fine. Like, whatever. He also, like, had a feel for any lumps and bumps. And I didn't have any of them, which is great. Look at me, healthy boy. And then he was done. So I put my clothes back on, sat down with him. He then told me that he would have to do the double incision technique because my chest is too big for periareola, but that's fine. I told him beforehand that I wanted double incision and that I don't trust periareola. It doesn't give you the opportunity to take away all of the extra skin, so it kind of leaves you looking a bit saggy unless you have like a tiny, tiny chest beforehand. So after that, he told me what would happen like coming up to surgery. Um, he told me about the post-op binder. It's pretty much a binder that you have to wear after surgery to keep the swelling down, and he told me how important that is. And he just told me to not be stupid and to take care of myself after surgery. I think that was about... Oh, no, 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 that wasn't it. Sorry, before I put my top back on, he made me stand up against the wall and he had to take pictures of my chest so that he would know, like, he could get, like, before and afters so he would know exactly what he's doing. That was uncomfortable, but he made sure he was like, lift your head up so you don't get your face in it. And I was also joking around with him. I was like, you know, you're not, you're not going to put this on social media, right? He was like, yeah, don't worry, not stupid. He also said that he knew a surgeon that did post someone's pre-op chest and the patient got to sue him for like 120 grand or something and I was like okay well if you want you can post my chest without my permission if I can get 120 grand off of you which he found quite funny thank you but yeah that's pretty much the consult with Miles done after that gave him a handshake um said thank you then we went back round to the waiting room and we went and talked to his um I don't know what she is really she was lovely. We just we just talked about like how much it would cost. So yeah, I went and talked to her. She told me how much it would cost and she told me about surgery dates. She told me what would happen and how I would pay for it. And um, she said they'll be sending out a booklet of um, things that will happen during surgery and after surgery and how to look after myself, which is really good. It's a lot of money, but it's decent for a private surgeon. And I, when I say that Miles Berry is like the best surgeon in England, I mean it. Obviously, this is my opinion, but as soon as I saw Miles' results, I was like, I have to go to him. I feel like he's just got, he's just got really great incisions. They're very thin. They're quite straight, but obviously not completely straight. And like, I love, I love how his scars look. His nipple placement looks great. I just like, I worship the ground he walks on because his fucking results are incredible. And I'm very lucky. And again, like, thank you guys so much for helping me out with this. Like, I wouldn't be able to do this without you. Um, And then after all that, she told me when I could get my surgery. She gave me a few surgery dates. So I now know my surgery date for top surgery. The day I'm getting top surgery. The day I finally get these fuckers off of my body. And yeah, I can't be asked for a build up. I'm getting top surgery on the 7th of January, 2019, which is very fucking soon. Like it's the beginning of November now. And I'm pretty sure I could have got it done earlier, but I chose January because that's the only month my mum can get like time off of work to look after me. I probably should have asked when the nearest top surgery date is just just in case you guys were wondering, uh, like to, to see how like short his wait lists are. But yeah, 7th of January, fuck. So fucking soon, and I'm so fucking ready for it. I know, I know it's gonna be scary by the time I've got there, and it's a massive surgery, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna ignore that. This is gonna be the biggest surgery I'll probably ever have in my life, and the recovery is very hard, and it's very, very hard on your body. And I know it's hard on your, like, mental health as well, and I'm, I'm prepared for that. Believe me, I'm prepared for that. I've wanted this ever since I started growing a chest. Legit, as soon as my mum noticed that I was growing a chest when I was, like, 11 or 12, she got me some sports bra, and I cried for about an hour, and I chucked the sports bra down the side of my bed, and I didn't wear it for a year, and I probably should have because I was growing. It was... I just, I've never wanted this body. I have never wanted this body, and I never will, and this is the only way that I can get rid of the one thing I hate most. So, yeah, it's gonna be scary, and I'm gonna be fucking terrified, but I'm so excited for it to finally happen. So, yeah, that's about it for the consult and when I'm gonna get top surgery. I've also asked if you guys wanna ask any questions about top surgery, just because... 
I don't know, just thought it would be nice to answer some questions. Um, Noah asked, by the way, I love your videos, Noah, you're sick, congrats on your top surgery. Um, Noah asked, what do you look forward to most for when you're post-op? Um, the biggest thing I look forward to is just being able to be, like, free, if you get what I mean, because, like, my chest has always restricted me. It's meant I couldn't, I, like, I wouldn't feel comfortable wearing specific clothes. I wouldn't feel comfortable being shirtless. I feel like it, it, it's pretty much just, like, stopping me from doing so much shit. I can't even look at it sometimes, and it's just, it's just there. It just gets in the way, and it makes me feel like shit. It makes me feel terrible about myself. I just, I'm just looking forward to being, like, free. I'm looking forward to be able to be, like, shirtless, because, believe me, when I get top surgery and it's all healed up, I'm never putting the top back on. I just want to be free, man. That sounds fucking wet as shit, but, like, it's a thing. What are you most scared about? Um, I'm more, like, I'm the most scared about recovery. Um... Just because I am a very antsy person, if I can't move about, I'll get stressed and I know that I'm gonna have to be like really chilled out after surgery. I need to like let myself recover. There's a binder on. Um, I'm terrified about the binder as well because I know that's gonna be tight and uncomfortable. Obviously, I'm scared that I won't like my results, but I'm not that scared because I completely trust Miles Berry. Like honestly, I've not seen one bad result from Miles and I trust that he knows what he's doing. Uh, Jay asks, what's the most important thing to you about your results? Straight scars, round nips, etc. Um, the most important thing to me about my results is that they're like as symmetrical as possible. Miles said that because my chest is like quite small, that my that my scars will be quite straight and like rounded at the end, but that like that's exactly what I want, so I'm not worried about him giving me like rounded scars. I do not like rounded scars, I think they look like 2D boobies. If you're looking straight on at someone and they've got rounded scars, they just, I... I'm sure people with rounded scars uh, are very happy with their results, but like, it's just not for me. I'm not incredibly worried about my scars because I know they'll be straight and they'll be thin because that's what he does best. Um, I guess I'm worried about my nipples because I'm not sure what he's going to do with my inverted one. It's a bit of a worry of mine. It's not a big one though. Yeah, I just want them to look good. I want them to be in the correct placement. Uh, how long does it take for it to heal properly? Um, there's not... Oh, that was weird. There's not like an exact time of when you'll be healed. Um, I'm pretty sure I heard that it takes like a year for all swelling to go down for some people. Um, for the first few weeks, you have to like, you have to, you have to be very gentle. You have to recover, you know. Um, you can't really lift your arms very high. You don't want to stretch your scars, uh, your incisions. Um, a few after a few months, you should be able to do pretty much anything. I'm pretty sure. I. I it, it's dependent on who you go with and who you are, I guess, and how you heal. A lot of people are asking if I'm getting keyhole, and I've always said that I'd never want keyhole. Um, I know I'm too big for keyhole. I've always knew, always known that I was too big for keyhole, and people are still like, nah, your chest is small, you'll get keyhole. Like, it's so, like, this, I really don't like this. It's really annoying. People are always like, every time I talk about binding, or if, like, I posted a few pictures where I was wearing KT tape, people would be like, oh my god, your chest is, like, non-existent. You have, like, no chest. Your chest is so small. But that's just not the case. I'm just good at hiding it with tape and binders and layers. People seem to think they know my body better than I know it. When I say I don't have, like, a small, tiny chest, I mean I don't have a small, tiny chest. I've got a smaller chest than a lot of people, but my chest is pretty average. But to a trans guy, having an average chest means that he's got these two massive things on him. And I've got a lot of gender dysphoria surrounding it. I, it's not small to me, it's massive to me, because that's the way I see it. Um, I'm not getting keyhole, I'm getting double incision. But yeah, that's the video, I hope you enjoyed it, I'm very fucking happy that I'm getting this done finally again like thank you to everyone that's helped me out just like it's, it's mad this is gonna be a massive part of my life it's gonna be very 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 big I'm glad that I can share it with you guys I'm gonna be I'm gonna be posting videos about it I'm gonna be posting my recovery I'm gonna try and make it as honest as I can uh the recovery experience the actual experience I'm I want to I want to show people what my experience was like I want to show people 100% of my experience because I know that that's what I wanted to see before I knew I could get top surgery, if that makes sense. But yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. If you didn't, that's your issue, not mine. Um, have a good day. Or don't. See you later, losers.